In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can derive the formula for the sum of any arithmetic series. So we're going to start with a basic arithmetic series. So we've got 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. And you should see that this is a very simple series. You're just having to add two each time. So there's a simple additive relationship. And we can number each of these values with a value of what we're going to call n. So we've got the first, second, third, fourth. So this would be n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4. And that just goes on for however many values you've got. If you had 10 values, you would go up to n equals 10, for example. And we can define some other things. We've got the first number in the series we're going to call a1, 1 meaning first. And we're going to say a1 equals 1 because that's our first term. Then we look at the difference between each of the two values that are next to each other. So 3 minus 1 is 2. 5 minus 3 is 2, 7 minus 5 is 2. So we're getting a common difference. So every value has the same difference. So we can define that as d equals 2, d being the difference between the terms. So that is our fundamental notation. And we can actually work out a general formula for each of these terms. So we can start by saying that our first term is simply a1. If we want to go from a1 to our second term, we have to add d to it. So the second term is going to be a1 plus d, a1 being 1, the difference being 2, and that's giving us 3, and that matches up perfectly. If we wanted to find the third term, we're going to have to start with a1, add 2 to get here, and then add another 2. So we have to do 2 times the difference. And so we get that expression. This is fairly straightforward so far, and I've just shown you the substitution to prove that it actually works. The fourth term is simply going to be a1 plus 3 times the difference, which gets us to the fourth term. And you should be spotting a nice pattern here. So if we look at the second term, it's d. Third is 2d. Fourth is 3d. So it's going to be 1 less than our n value. So this number here is going to be represented by n minus 1. So if we want to find the nth term, so n could be any number that we choose, we could find that value with this formula. So we take a1 plus n minus 1, so that's 1 less than your n, and then times it by d, and that will give you any term. If we wanted to find the sum of every single number in the series, so we have n numbers, we'll add them all up and find the total, we simply add a1 plus a1 plus d plus a1 plus 2d plus a1 plus 3d, just add all this up, and we get a formula for the sum of the entire series. So we've added everything together, on that list, and we get this massive long sum. That is one way of finding the sum of a series. But we could also think about it backwards. So we could write a formula for the sum of a series completely backwards. So instead of starting at a1, which is the beginning, we could start at the very, very end. Start at a1, and then take off d each time. So we'd have a series like this. So we start at the very end, this is the last term, plus the second last term, plus the third last term, plus the fourth last term, all the way up until you get to your very first term. This here will eventually become your A1 value, and that's the end of the series. So we could write the summation in these two different ways. And it basically says that if you do 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9, that's the same as 9 plus 7 plus 5 plus 3 plus 1. Those two are going to give exactly the same. So these two are actually equal. So we're going to remember these two, and we're going to do something with this that's going to give us our final formula. So we've got these two that we've derived. This is adding them all up from the start. This is adding them all up from the end. And what we can actually do is add these two formulae together. And when we add these two together, we're going to have, for example, plus d minus d. So the d's cancel out. 2d minus 2d. They're gone. Same thing here. n minus 1d. We've got a plus here. Plus minus n minus 1d, they're going to cancel out. So we're actually going to get, when we do the addition, this formula here. So sn plus sn is 2sn. So we've got double the sum. And then we've got a1 plus an, a1 plus an. And that series is just going to go on like that. And if, for example, we had two numbers in our series, it would be two times. If we had three, it would be three times a1 plus an. We in general, have n of these. So we can say that 2sn is n times this. So the longer your series, the more a1 plus ans you're going to get when you do this addition. We can tidy this up a little bit by moving the 2 to the other side. So the sum of the series is going to be equal to this. 
We could, of course, move that uh, out front and have it look like this. This is close to the final value, but if we think back to our general formula for the nth term on the previous slide, so as before, we had a n equal to a1 plus one, n minus 1 times your difference. So we can substitute this formula for a n into here, and we get this expression here. You should, of course, notice that a1 plus a1, they're going to add to a1, and we have now derived the most common formula for the sum of an arithmetic series. So I hope you followed this derivation and you can see where this famous formula comes from. And finally, thank you very much for watching.